Okay, so in this video, we'll cover some more advanced uh, functionalities uh, with query function. And some of the things we'll cover is how to build pivot tables, how to create calculated fields. Overall, that's pretty much, I guess, it. Uh, there's gonna be group by statements involved, but it's sort of a part of pivot tables anyways. First of all, let's uh, take a look at our data. Uh, basically, this is what we have. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail how to do pivots or how to do basic query functions. If you don't know that, please go ahead and watch my previous videos about query functions and also uh, probably watch pivot table videos. That would be helpful to understand what's going on here. Otherwise, let's just go ahead and jump into this. We will also cover, by the way, some functions that are available that could be used in query function. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go to this tab. This is where I'm gonna actually write my functions and returns of that. I guess I'll zoom in a little bit to see the results. Uh, I'm gonna go back here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a calculated field. I have some sales and I have some cost of goods for my items. Now, uh, we want to also create the net for those items, but instead of creating a new column and doing sales minus cost of goods uh, to get that new column, I'm actually gonna do it directly in my query function to see how that works. So let's see, so the column G is sales, column age is our cost of goods, I'm gonna go here, start with my equals query, and I'll go ahead and select my data, click on transactions, start from the beginning, control shift right down to select my data set, comma, so I'm going to start with just something basic, I'll just say select star, which means all the columns, and we have one a row of headings on top, close parentheses, this should pretty much return the same table on this other tab. So, so apparently I got an error uh, because in my current tab I didn't have enough rows for a second, it went ahead and created new rows and now it just dumped the data in. So anyway, so that gets me exactly the same data. Now, what I want, instead of having everything, which is the star, I'll just go ahead and let's say, just grab the region, which is the D column. I'll go ahead and grab the state E column. I'll go ahead and do the F, which is the brand. And then I'll do sales, which is G and CDFG, and then we have E, which is gonna be our cost of goods. And I'm gonna hit enter, now that should return less columns here. Hopefully, so I got a value error, I'm gonna have to check what's going on here. So, uh, oh, so apparently I did, oh, this should be H, shouldn't it? Okay, so that should return uh, the results, sales, cost of goods. Now we want to also return our net. Now the net is gonna be basically sales minus cost of goods. So I'm gonna say comma, which means let's add another column. So I'm gonna do G minus H and hit enter. And there it is, we got the difference, which is basically sales minus cost of goods. Now, I don't really need to return this. If I just wanted to get the net, I didn't have to really return G or H. I could just say that should be G minus H and that should return our calculated field. Now uh, you can do calculations like you can do minus, plus, divide and multiply. Same things you do in Excel basic math. So that's how we get a calculated field. Now let's get to pivoting our data now. And the first thing I'm going to do is get our sales in each region, right? So if I just wanted to get the total sales or total, I guess, net, we'll start with sales, keep it simple. So G column is the sales values and D column is our region. So I'm gonna go here and basically change this up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and select 
sum of G, which is our sales, and I'm gonna group by our D column. Hit enter, and there it is, that's our sum of sales. Now usually we want to see which region it is, so we'll also add that D column to our select column. So again, if you don't know about group by, there is a separate video. I go a lot more into detail about explaining how this exactly works, but that's basically this, right? We got our totals grouped by region. Now, uh, as far as the pivoting goes, overall, like the difference between pivot and group by is that pivot will go by columns and group by will go row by row. So what do I mean by that is that if instead of group by D, I just say pivot D, I don't need to select it in this case. There it is, I'm gonna get the same thing. Now the difference as you saw is that when we do group by, we actually have to select that to actually see the label on the side. When you do pivot, you don't actually select that particular column. And pivot will simply just spit out the columns like this and give us the values. And now I got it row by row. So now if let's say we wanted to build a report, that's gonna be our uh, sales by brand broken down by region, right? So one way we could do this, we, the brand is F, the region is D. So one way we could do this is uh, if I go ahead and get back to this, I could say, uh, group by D and now we can't even see what's going on there because we have to now select those columns which is D and F to understand what this data actually represents. Again this is similar to our group by statements. Oh you know what extra comma there there we go, there it is. Now we got our region broken down by brand and total. Now what if we want a little easier to read report in a cross tab view? And this is where the pivot functionality is helpful. Now instead of putting the regions in here as a row, I'll put regions as columns and I'll put brands here on the left, right? So in order to do that, I'll go back here. So D was the region. So I'm gonna just remove D from here, just keep F. And I'm gonna also remove D from here. And instead of that, I'll just pivot. D, hit enter. And now you'll see we got a cross tab, nice report that gives us our brands broken down by region in this cross tab layout and we have numbers right here in the middle. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, just to go over this, first I did select the F column was what I was grouping by, which is F was my brands. And I also sum G, which is our sales. And then to get the columns, I pivoted by D. And D we don't select because it's in pivot statement. Hit enter, we get our results. Now I want to make this a little more interesting. And the way you can make this more interesting is by using some functions. And some of the things that pivot tables in uh, Google Sheets currently don't do is uh, deal with dates. So for example, to do pivot, we had to create this new column year and extract the year out of the date to be able to pivot it by a year, right? But with query function, you can actually do it without creating that extra column. So you can actually group this dates using this A column and have your years. I'm gonna go back here. So uh, the A column was my dates. So I'm gonna just remove the brands for now, which is our F column. And I'll just go by A and group by A. Now again, the problem with this is that A is just individual dates. So what we can do, we can wrap this into a function. So I'm gonna use the function year around the date. 
and also for the return value I'm gonna group that and see unable to parse the string for function query cannot perform function on a year column that is not a date so if you ever get this error I'm actually glad this error came out that means you have to go to your original data and select your dates and go under format and under number switch it to date and now if I go back I should see that this actually works so there it is we select year and the column A and this is simply just to see the results and this is where we group by year so we can also do month to month year to year report actually doing this and how can we accomplish that so uh, let's actually clean this up and uh, the A column is the date right so I'll just go ahead and delete this and I'll also go ahead and delete this so instead of picking the year I'm gonna say let's get the month function and the column is A for dates, comma. That's gonna be what I want to see as row by row, and I want sum of sales. And then I'm gonna group by our month A, which is the column A is dates. So if I simply just hit enter right now, this is simply going to be a report, so you can see the first month is actually returned as a zero, the zero month. And 11 is our December, which is kind of weird, but that's fine, still works. So this is just our month-to-month -month sales, but now we have the total for multiple years for our first month, which is in this case is December. Now I'm going to go back here uh, and break this down year to year, so I'm going to do a pivot statement. And then I'll use my year function on the same A column and hit enter. And there it is, our year to year, month to month sales broken down. And you can see we have partial 2017 here, only two months of data, but it doesn't matter. It just works just fine. So you can see how we have our month to month, year to year report by doing this. Now, we should probably be able to convert this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, uh, you know, 11 to 1 to 1 to 12. And the way I should be able to do it is just by adding 1 here. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I think it will. So, sure enough, it works. So, there it is. So, 1 to 12, that's our months, and this is our years. That's our month to month, year to year report using date and using sales. Okay, so let's do a couple of uh, other examples here just to make sure we understand how this whole thing works. Uh, let's uh, create a report by sales rep and uh, that's going to be our column C and sales, column G. So C and G. So I'll go ahead and do select C sum g and we'll group by c so there it is that's our report for each salesperson now if we wanted to break it down by year we could use this year column or we can use a function on a column because i have years i'll just go ahead and use that b column so I'll just go ahead and do, we want to put those in columns. So I'll do pivot B. That's our year to year report. Now, uh, another thing that could be useful here, uh, I'll take my year and I guess break down by age groups just to see an example of that. Go back here and K all right so again uh, sometimes when you don't have enough columns that exist 
it will go ahead and do that and then you'll get the results anyways so you can see how i was able to take 2015 first age group 2015 second age group 2015 third age group until we're done with all the different age groups and then we can move on to the next i guess to make this easier to understand let's just do regions which is column d instead of age groups so i'm gonna do year and the region so you can see that's 2015 midwestern and all different regions for 2015 and then we have 2016 and then we have the breakdown for that so you can do multiple breakdowns so if you wanted to take this and break it down by age groups or the other way around i guess let's do the other way around so now i'm gonna do age group which is the column k so i'll do k comma c and I'll, then I'll group by K comma C, which is age group then broken down by sales rep. That's the first age group broken down by sales reps. And then the second age group, third one, and so on. Again, some of these reports, uh, if you make them too complicated, it's really hard to read, but it's possible to do this if you wanted to. So I'll just simply just make this easier to read let's remove this d out of here and that should be our age group report year to year hopefully that makes sense now obviously you don't have to do just some you can also do your average so we can do avg g column so that's our average sale so that's our sum of sales sum of sales sum of sales and then we have our average sale right next to it again broken down year to year and i think that does it hopefully that makes sense so keep in mind again with pivots a lot of times you can use a pivot in your query function without actually using any group by right so you could simply just say let's sum up sales and pivot it by our b column which is going to be our year column and it will work you get this report but most of the time the reason you use pivot is because you already broke down something row by row with your group by and then you want to do another breakdown that goes in columns and that's where you're gonna create your basically first you're gonna uh, select some sort of column so let's say the column d and the sum of the column you're looking for then you'll go ahead and group by by the same column you've selected here and then you'll pivot it by that other column you want and then you get this two-dimensional cross tab layout report uh, we should be able also to just remove this end in K and this way uh, the reason you may want to do this instead of having the last row just remove it and just keep the column this way if we keep adding more records to our table we don't have to come back and you know recreate our function it will just automatically update and dynamically include new values in it hopefully all of that makes sense and i hope i didn't forget anything if you have questions just let me know in comments thanks for watching please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video